but it is. Like one in six elementary school kids goes home to a house without food in it. That's a scary statistic. Like we deal with this in a very real way in America every day. So I started thinking about what I could do like as one person, as one homeless person actually, like I had my dog in a suitcase and that was it. My dog is Zuzu, I've had her for 11 years so she's like always been there. <laughs> but um, I had my dog in a suitcase and I was like, what could I do, like what can Shay Kelly do to make the world a better place? And um, so I, I came up with this idea to like collect canned goods and I collect them like a Girl Scout does. Like I go knocking on doors in different communities. Like I go around neighborhoods and I'm just like, hey, I'm Shay and I'm doing a food drive. Would you guys like to donate? And then they do, which is really incredible. And I started practicing it. And I started saving up my tip money and I bought that truck in August. And I moved into the pickup truck. I've been, mo I've been living in that truck since August 29th of last year. So over a year, which Living in a pickup truck is a whole other story. Like, that's really a complicated scenario, but it's worked. Um, and I live in there with my dog, and we do these food drives every week. And the goal is 200 canned food items a week um, in each state. So that doesn't sound like a lot, but it's amazing how a little bit will add up to so much. 200 canned food items in each state each week is 10,000 after a year. So like that's crazy. That's a lot of canned food items for one person going door to door in a community. So. And then the sock drive started out as just um, asking people as I was going door to door if they had any extra pairs of socks. And it's turned into over 3,000 pairs of socks collected and distributed um, from coast to coast. So I've been to 42 states, actually 43 states, North Carolina is number 43. 43 states and 43 weeks, including Alaska. And um, I left with $83. So on the first of the year when this project was decided that this was gonna happen, it was gonna start, um, I had no money. My friend called me, he was like, he was like, are you really crazy enough to do this? Because I had been talking about it for a while and everybody thought I was a lunatic. Um, and he said, are you really gonna do this? And I said, I said, absolutely, like, I'm leaving. I have the truck, I have the plan, it's gonna work. He said, do you have the money? I said, I have 83 bucks, <laughs> but it'll work, like I swear. And sure enough, 43 states later, it has worked. I just lost my mic. Oh no. Does this one work? No. I can yell really loud. Can you hear me? It's okay. I'll just yell in the meantime. You guys can hear me, right? I bet you the car. Okay, cool. I have a loud voice. I was I was born with it. It's a blessing. <laughs> Okay, so um, so 43 states in 43 weeks, which is like a mere, I would say no, sh nothing short of a miracle by itself. It's pretty incredible. I'm still like blown away every day that it's, I've made it this far. Um, I only have seven states left, which is like a really small like area that's, I look at the whole US and I'm like, wow, how did that happen? Um, and along the way, because I'm living in a pickup truck and I am basically like quote unquote homeless myself, I don't have a house. I don't have like a, a shower that I can like, you know, so I guess I'm homeless. Um, so since I'm in that situation myself, I get a really unique perspective on the situation of poverty in America. Now along the way, like I, I started out homeless, not by choice, you know? Okay. So you can work on it? Gotcha. So. Um, Along the way, like I'm, when I first started, I wasn't choosing to be homeless. It was, it was a series of unfortunate events. Hello? Sweetness. Okay, cool. Um, so like I said, along the way, I wasn't choosing to be homeless. It was, it was a series of unfortunate events at first, like in 2009 when the whole thing happened. Um, and I just lost it again. Oh wait, there it goes. It's gonna be on, it's gonna play tricks on us. Okay. So, but along the way, because of really awesome people all across the US, it was actually made possible for me to get myself out of my situation. Like had I, had I made the choice, I was offered some really lucrative marketing jobs, some other things happened where people stepped up and they were like, if you don't wanna live in your truck anymore, if you want to go back to working a regular nine to five, like that option is available to you. And I said no, because this has changed my life. Like, I'm a completely different person today in 2010 than I was in 2009. And it's, 
it's because of the experiences that I've had. And honestly, I've learned that I really don't need anything other than my truck and my dog. Um, that happiness is achievable without um, without a hundred thousand dollar house and a you know and a, you know it, it's just that happiness has nothing to do with stuff. And I've I've met some of the most incredible people on the street. Um, I spend most of my time hanging out with homeless people and like learning why they're in their situations or what their perspective is on life and just that alone has been earth shattering like i would definitely encourage all of you to step outside of your your comfort level like step outside of your box and like approach people that you might be uncomfortable talking to and find out more about them because that alone will change your life um i'm going to tell like do you guys have any questions just kind of about what i just said before i start talking about like about my life or anything where do I get gas money? Great question. Okay, cool. So, um, like I said, I left with 83 bucks, and we all know that gas is really expensive at times, right? Um, well, all the time. Um, that was, I was fully prepared when I left to, like, be that person with the cardboard sign, like, desperate, because I wanted so badly to, like, see this dream come to fruition. I wanted my whole life to go to 50 states, um, but this, this project came to me, like, like a vision, like this is what I wanted to do. I'd never, I've never experienced like such a purpose in my life with such clarity, and I just really wanted to do it. And I, if you've ever like wanted something like that badly to where you're willing to do just about anything to get it, so I was prepared to like beg, but by the grace of God, I haven't had, I haven't needed to ever, like not once. Um, it's really surreal how people, complete strangers that I haven't even spoken to yet, will walk up and hand me five dollars or they'll hand me ten dollars. And so by the grace of God in five and ten and two and twelve dollar increments um, given to me by thousands of people, literally thousands of people from coast to coast, um, I've made it from one state to the next. It's absolutely like, I want to eventually write a book called the, the Big Book of Thank Yous because so many amazing people stepped forward to help me get from one state to the next. And let alone the thousands of people who dropped a can in my bag when I was standing on their doorstep or gave me a bag of socks. So like, none of this would have been possible without just thousands of awesome people kind of coming together. There's no corporate sponsorship. There's no one like writing me a big check. There's, there's nothing like that. It's just really awesome regular people that, that wanted to see it get done. So I think there's a lot of people out there in the world that would do this if they didn't have like kids or a mortgage. Like and like you guys like definitely be grateful for where you're at in your life because like you have an opportunity where you have no anchors. There's nothing like hold you don't have the mortgage. You don't have, you know, five kids and you don't you don't have these things that will like make you stay in one spot or like outline your decisions for you like that's a great place to be because you can kind of just like jump off a cliff like if there's a time to do something that that might not make sense this this is the time to do it if you really believe in it and you feel like you're supposed to so that's how I get my gas money any other questions good my parents how do my parents feel that's a really good question my mom it's actually my mom pretty much raised me by herself and um it's been a metamorphosis with my family. Like um, when I originally told them what I wanted to do, and I didn't have anything. I didn't have the truck. I didn't have a camera. I didn't have any nothing um, or any money. <laughs> they thought I was crazy. You know, someone someone told me once a very wise person said that um, that success happens in three phases. That the first the first phase of success is when everyone tells you that you're crazy. <laughs> Because, you know, and you look at, like, the greats of, of America, and, like, they they probably all got told that they were crazy, you know? Like, um, I like to talk about Nikolai Tesla, because this is a guy that, like, figured out how to harness electricity. <laughs> like, they probably thought he was nuts. We can't see electricity. So people were probably like, that's the craziest thing. But he stuck with it and, like, changed the face of of the world, you know, like he changed the way we look at everything. So, so the first phase of success is everyone saying like, you're a lunatic. And that definitely happened to me. People were like, you need to go, like they, they were telling me I need to go see like a therapist. Like they thought I had like gone off, cause I'm a home, I was a homeless girl. They were like this person who has nothing, like thinks that she's gonna go to all the 50 states and help people. They thought I was nuts. Um,